before the product research, before creating your brand, before making any money on Amazon, you need to create your Amazon Seller Central account. Unfortunately, this entire process requires a multiple steps that need to be done in chronological order or you'll find yourself in a position where Amazon will reject your application and you'll have a hard stop before you even started. If you're new to the channel, my name's Andre and I've teamed up with AMZ Scout over the past year making comprehensive videos just like this one here to walk you through step-by-step -step tutorials to help elevate your Amazon business. In today's video, we'll show you the differences between the seller account types, which steps to take so the sign up process is easy, and most importantly, a bonus step at the end of this video that we'll see most sellers miss when starting their Amazon store. Before we jump into signing up for an Amazon account, let's address both of the seller account types that you can actually get from Amazon and which one may fit your business model the best. The first type of seller account and the one I recommend is a professional account. This option is designed for sellers who will sell more than 40 units per month and just need to pay a one-time monthly fee of $39.99. The other option is an individual account that Amazon will charge you a 99 cents per unit you sell. For most folks, the goal is to start off by selling 150 to 200 units with their first month selling on the platform. That means if you have an individual account, you'll be paying three to five times more than what you would if you signed up for a professional account. If you do decide to start with an individual account over a professional account, just because you're not really sure how much volume you'll be doing in sales, that's fine. At any point in the future, you always can upgrade your plan from an individual to a professional once those sales start rolling in and it makes more sense to switch over to the different plan. Now that we have the seller account types out of the way, let's get into the tutorial of how to sign up for your account and some vital steps to ensure your application isn't rejected or even worse, your account isn't banned and later down the road. Once you click on sign up, you'll need to enter your first and last name here, an email address below, and finally, a password for the account. In my opinion, I strongly encourage you to create a new email that you strictly use for Amazon that's separate from your personal email. It makes things a little bit more professional looking at it from Amazon's point of view, and also it makes things a little bit more organized for yourself just because you're able to separate all of your personal emails from everything that's related to Amazon. Once you enter your email and password, Amazon is going to send you an OTP to verify your email. So just copy and paste that here and click verify. After that, Amazon will then have you verify your phone number with the same process of sending you an OTP code to verify it's you. Now it is important to note here that if you have made an Amazon account in the past and you've used that same number, Amazon is gonna prompt you to actually go back to that old Amazon account and use that for your storefront. Unfortunately, you can't use the same phone number for multiple different storefronts in most cases. So just make sure that you have your old account maybe deleted or taken care of before you start a new one. Once your phone number has been verified, you'll be brought to this page where Amazon is gonna give you a heads up on some of the information you're gonna need for the application. If you look to the side here, you'll see the what you'll need section, which is a valid government issued ID or passport, a recent bank account or credit card statement, a chargeable credit or debit card, and a mobile phone. I highly encourage you to make sure you have all of these things organized and ready to go when you start your application. You'll notice when you're on the application and let's say you input a credit card incorrectly, Amazon will then prompt you and say, hey, you have four tries left before you have to wait 24 to 48 hours. Last thing you wanna do is prolong this process even more. Make sure that you're ready. Once you click on begin, the first page is about your business information. The first tab is a drop down menu that once you click on the left hand side, it will allow you to choose what country your business is in. Next, you'll need to choose your business type. For most individuals, this will be a privately owned business. Below that, you'll have to put the official name of your business as it's registered with your certain state. Then at the very bottom, you have to check this box that confirms your business location and type are correct and the information cannot be changed in the future. Once you click next, you'll be brought to this page where we need to add some of the important information about your business. One of the most vital pieces of information is your company registration number or your EIN. 
This EIN number is actually assigned to your business when you create it. If you don't have some type of a DBA or LLC, you actually can use your social security number for this portion. Below inputting your EIN, you have to put your registered business address below and click next to the bottom. For the second page, you'll have to input the primary contact information for the business. Really just some generic information like name, country of citizenship, country of birth, and address. You'll also need to input the form of identity proof, which is either a driver's license or passport, and below the driver's license number or passport number. Right below that is where you'll have to choose if this person is the beneficial owner of the business or a legal representative, as well as if the primary contact person is the only beneficial owner of the business. Finally, at the end of this page, you'll need to check this box confirming you're acting on behalf of the registered business and press next at the bottom. Before we lock in the last few steps of this tutorial, I just wanted to take a moment to say if you're finding value to this video, make sure to smash that like button as all it does is incentivize us more to create exact videos to really help you through your Amazon business. After clicking next, you'll be brought to this page where Amazon again is reiterating all the bank information they'll need in order to verify your account before you can start selling. The first section is to select the bank account holder's name their country, and finally, the name of the final institution you bank with. Below that, you'll need to input the routing number for your bank as well as the bank account number for Amazon to deposit payments to you. In most cases, after pressing next, you'll be met with this message where Amazon will need further verify your bank information with more details like bank statements. Just press continue at this point to complete the rest of the application. This next session is for your monthly subscription fee. Amazon needs a card on file that they can charge every month for this. Just input your card here, the expiration date, and the card holder's name and press next. At the top of the next page, you'll need to input your desired store name. This is a section that I see a lot of folks getting hung up on. They may at this point not know what they want their store name to be, or they try and choose something that's way too detailed or specific just to one product. My recommendation is choose something broad and know that you can actually change this name in the future. Below the store name, you'll see the question of, do you have a universal product code or UPC for all your products? This is something that is unavoidable that you'll need to buy from a specific company called GS1 that will give you a barcode for your product that costs $30. You'll just select yes for this option here. In the past, you were able to use different barcode manufacturers, but in recent time, Amazon has really cracked down on this and GS1 is your only option. For the next question about diversity certification, I'm gonna select no just because I don't have any. Next on this page is one again I see folks getting hung up on and that's do you own a brand or serve as an agent or representative of the brand? In most cases, you'll be selling private label products on Amazon and you're gonna choose yes for this question. Finally, you'll be able to answer the last question of do you have an active registered trademark, which if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you probably don't at this point. Not to worry if you don't have an active trademark through the USPTO or some other different type of trademark registration, that's totally fine. It's something that you can do along the product research process and send into Amazon at a later time. After clicking next, you'll be brought to the final step of the process, and that is identify and address verification. It's important that you take your time to look over all the information you've input so far to make sure there are no spelling errors and all the information of your address is correct. Then at the bottom of the page, there will be two sections, one for uploading pictures of your driver's license or passport, and the other is for a proof of address that can be done with a bank statement. Once you upload these two documents, click next to submit your seller account application to Amazon. Now it's important to know that Amazon will take between 24 and 48 hours to either approve or deny your application. In most cases, Amazon will actually respond to you within that window asking for more information to kind of verify some of the documents you had previously sent. 
You may be wondering, why is Amazon doing this by making you jump through all these different hoops to verify all the different types of information? But it's designed to keep scammers off the platform and allow all the shopping customers to make purchases in confidence, knowing they're protected by the Amazon platform. Honestly, this is one of the major benefits of selling on Amazon is the sheer size of the customer base. You have hundreds of millions of active shoppers spending their money every single day. Once you've created your Amazon seller account and you're ready to start diving into the product research aspect of this process, AMC Scout is offering a free trial on their product research software so you can get started on this entire process for free and as soon as today. Having a tool that operates directly on the Amazon platform is absolutely vital for your success when doing product research, supplier outreach, analysis of competition levels, all these major elements come from data and metrics that the AMZ platform lays out perfectly for you to make the best decision possible. If you're interested, there will be a link in the description that will bring you right to the free trial so you can get signed up. After today's video, you now have every step of the process locked in for filing your application for your Amazon Seller Central account. Of course, we gave you some good tips to make sure that your application wasn't denied, as well as some good tips to make sure that your account wasn't banned in the future. Now, as always, make sure to drop a comment down below with any questions you may have about this entire process or any other questions you may have about Amazon in general. Like always, if you guys found value to this video, make sure to smash that like button, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace.